Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an AWS Cloud9 environment. And after that, I will give you a quick tour of the Cloud9 IDE. AWS Cloud9 is a cloud-based integrated development environment that lets you write, run, and debug your code with just a browser. So you don't need to install anything in your own machine. Cloud9 gives you access to a computer in the cloud, and this machine will come with prepackaged tools for popular languages like Python, JavaScript, MySQL, and many more. And aside from that, you will also have the option to install additional tools that you may need for your projects. To access this machine in the cloud, you simply need a web browser and an internet connection. It doesn't matter whether you're using a Mac, Windows, or Linux machine. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up a Cloud9 environment. Here in the AWS Management Console, let's search for Cloud9 and then click on the result to launch the AWS Cloud9 Console. And then look for the Create Environment button and click on it. Now, step one is to give it a name. I will just give it a generic name, but for your actual projects, it's a good practice to make sure that your names are more descriptive. And then you also have the option to give it a description. Then go ahead and click Next. Now here in step two, we configure the environment. Under environment type, we have three options. I won't go into the differences between these three. For now, let's just choose the first option, which says direct access. This will be the easiest one for us to set up. When you see the term EC2 instance, this is just what Amazon uses to refer to the virtual servers that they provide. So to put it simply, this is basically a computer in the cloud that you can access remotely from your own physical machine like the laptop or desktop that you're using right now. This EC2 instance will be in a different location from where you are, possibly a different continent altogether, but you will be able to access it over the internet. So this option that we are choosing here easily sets up the EC2 instance along with everything else that will allow us to connect to it using a web browser. No need for us to worry about the other details. And then we choose the instance type. We see that we've got some options here that sets how much RAM and how many virtual CPUs our EC2 instance will have. Now you might be tempted to just choose any of the higher specs, but keep in mind that it is going to cost more. So for this one, I will just go with the t2.micro option. And then we choose the platform or the operating system that our environment will use. We have three options here and I won't be going into the differences between them as well because there's quite a bit you can talk about under this topic. But for this demo, I will choose the Ubuntu option. So it isn't going to matter whether your local machine, the one you are physically using right now, is running a Windows operating system or a Mac operating system or even some other type of Linux distribution. As long as you have a browser and an internet connection, then you will be able to access this virtual server. And then here we have the cost saving setting. This sets the amount of time before our environment goes into auto hibernate if it's not being used so that we don't end up incurring unnecessary charges. For this one, let's just keep the default of 30 minutes. And then we can just go ahead and ignore these other settings and move on to the final step where we just review the details. And if everything is okay, then we click on Create Environment. So now the Cloud9 environment is being created. This may take a while, but once this is done, we will have access to our Cloud9 IDE, which is completely browser-based. You can actually see the IDE in the background right now. As you can see, we are still in the browser. And once the process is complete, we can access this IDE immediately. Okay, so now this Cloud9 environment has been successfully set up. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of its important sections. Up here at the top, we've got the main menu. 
You can click on this button to collapse it and then just click anywhere in the collapsed area to bring it back. And then here in this large area is where the editor resides. This is where we can edit our files. But right now we don't have any files yet and all we see is just the welcome page. Down here is the terminal window where we can interact with the command line interface or CLI for short. This CLI that we see here allows us to execute commands on the EC2 instance or that virtual server associated with our Cloud9 environment. In other words, when we execute commands here, we are actually executing them on that computer, that server in the cloud, which is located somewhere else in the world. We are just connecting to it via the internet. So our local machine doesn't really do anything here except to send and receive information to and from that virtual server that we are connected to using this browser-based IDE. And this particular server that we set up here, we chose the Ubuntu operating system for it, if you recall. So even if you're using a Windows machine right now, for example, the machine on the other end of this browser-based terminal is a server running the Ubuntu operating system. Okay, so you can close this terminal by clicking on this X button, but if you want to open additional terminal windows, you can go to Window and then choose new terminal. Okay, so earlier I mentioned that Cloud9 comes prepackaged with some tools like Python and JavaScript, for example. So let's say if we want to use Python, we don't need to install it anymore. We can just type Python 3 to launch the Python interactive shell. And here we see at the time of this recording, it already comes with Python 3.6.9. You might see a different version depending on when you're watching this video, but you can also upgrade this if you'd like. Okay, so you can run some Python commands here. And then type exit to quit the Python interactive shell. Now here on the left side, we see the environment window. This shows you a list of the files and folders in your environment, and you can explore them all here in this window. You should see a folder at the top that has the same name as your Cloud9 environment. This is your environment's root folder. You can hover over it to see the path, and you can click on this icon here to show or hide the environment window. Back here in the command line, the current working directory that you see here corresponds to the root folder. Notice that here in the root folder, we have just one file called readme.md. If I go here to the command line and type ls to list the files and folders inside this directory, you will also just see the readme file here because these are both referring to the same location. We just have two different ways of accessing the same thing. And of course, these files and folders are located in the virtual server. None of these are in your local machine. We are just accessing all of this remotely. Okay, so I can make a new folder here in the environment window by right-clicking on the root folder and choosing new folder. I'm just going to name this one folder one. And then if I go back here to the command line and type ls again, you'll see that it now also shows the newly created folder. And then I can also create a new directory here in the command line by typing mkdir or make dir, followed by the new directory's name. Let's just call this one folder two. So this will create a new folder named folder two inside the environment's root folder. And then you see it show up here in the environment window.
And then if we want to change directories here in the command line, we can just use the cd command. So here in the root folder, I can type cd folder one to go inside it. And as you can see, the prompt shows that my current working directory is now folder one. If I want to go back up to the root folder, I can type cd followed by a space, then two dots. And then we can also create new files. One way is to click on this plus icon and then choose new file. And this adds a new tab in the editor window for this newly created untitled new file. Another option is to use the control N keyboard shortcut that creates a new file as well. Okay, so now that we have this new file, we can type some code here, like some JavaScript or PHP, for example. Let's just go ahead and create an example in Python. And then let's go ahead and save it. I'm just going to save it here in the root folder. And then to run this, we can just click on the run button. And then it shows us any output down here in what's called a run configuration window. And here is our basic output. Now, I just want to point out that you can also expand this entire console area by clicking on this button here and then click on it again to make the console smaller. And then if you accidentally close the entire console, don't worry, you can simply go to view console to bring it back. Now, if you wanna upload files from your local machine onto your Cloud9 environment, you can easily just click and drag to upload. I have some Python files here, and I will just drag them to the desired folder, like folder one, for example. And then you will see the upload progress here, but since these are very small files, the upload is just quick. And here are the files. To open a file, you can simply double click on it and it opens up in the editor. All right, so that ends this short tour of the Cloud9 IDE, but there is definitely more to explore in the future. If you want to launch the Cloud9 console again, you can click on this Cloud9 icon here in the main menu and then choose go to your dashboard. This opens up a new browser tab and you will see all the Cloud9 environments that you currently have. Right now there's only one, but we have the option to create more. If you want to shut down your EC2 instance, you can go to the terminal and type sudo power off. And then you can just go ahead and close the tab. There's no need for you to wait for the shutdown to complete. And even if you forget to close this, remember that we set it up so that it's going to auto hibernate after 30 minutes of being idle. And then to launch it again, just go back to your Cloud9 console and click on Open IDE. And then if ever you click away from the Cloud9 console, you can always just look for it again here in the search bar. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.